Hi everyone, and today I'll be showing you the upgraded version of the evolution game. So previously the evolution game was you have three phases. One is choose an attribute, then after they fight a creature, then you evolve your species. And you start off as a bacteria and then you try to evolve as much as possible to humans and beyond. Right, right now, we have interfaced this with the DAW E API in order to generate images based on the options. So this involves a lot of API. We no longer use the web browser. And let's take a look at how this goes. So we start off with protozoa, all right? I, I didn't choose bacteria because bacteria has attributes like fast reproduction, which, you know, it might be censored by DAW E. <laughs> so we start with protozoa. So let's see, I think I like predatory. I like to, to basically try to grab and like harness the power of predatory stuff in order to survive. So you can see now you have developed specialized structures to capture and consume other microorganisms in the pond. That's great. All right. And you can see that the attribute has been adapted as well. So you can see that as we go through this um, notebook, this is actually outputting the stuff one by one in sequential order. It's like in chain of thought, you know, species, attribute, habitat, and then you have the phase over here. Okay, so now we can choose like what creature to fight, uh, amoeba, paramecium, or euglena. So you can see here's one here, one here, one here. So I think amoeba should be the easiest. So let's try it out. Okay, so I think in the future, one thing that it could be done is that, you know, based on this outcome over here, we can perhaps generate a video, you know, some ambient music, the amoeba engulf the prey, digesting it and absorbing its nutrients. Amoeba successfully defended. Oh, wow. Did I just become an amoeba? Oops. <laughs> I think I died. All right, I became the amoeba because like, I, you know, okay, looks like an amoeba ate me up. All right, so I can evolve to a new species now. Uh, I think I will go to a parasitic worm. All right, let's, let's try that. So you can see there's the worm over here, sponge and the jellyfish. I didn't know that amoeba can eat up a protozoa, but you know, stuff happens. Okay, I've evolved into a parasitic worm. I've developed the ability to feed on internal or external surface of a host organism. Okay, so I can choose one of this. Actually, I don't really like worms. Okay, maybe I should have picked it. So you can see that now we have like sucking mouth parts, which is censored <laughs> because I guess of some other stuff. Anticoagulants, I think segmented body. Sounds good. Like with a segmented body, you can perhaps like, okay, we you can perhaps like be able to weave through things. Okay, so you can see that um initially we have some problems with the JSON output. Okay, I try to give the large language model output as JSON. I, I will cover that later. So you can see we have resilient, predatory, and segmented body. I'm a worm right now. Okay, a parasitic worm. You have to choose one of the creatures to fight. Okay, a leviathan, a venomous spider, or an electric eel. So let's see what is, okay, see how the picture looks like. There's a leviathan, there's a spider, and an eel. I think I will try to fight the, uh, all of them look difficult. Yeah, I think maybe we can try, I mean, as a worm, probably can, you know, fight the electric eel, I hope. Yeah, <laughs> let's see how it goes. So yeah, I'm quite curious as well. Maybe I should have picked jellyfish here because I don't really like worms. Yeah. So, but you know, in evolution, things happen. You know, you just have to, to bear with it. All right, we can choose one of the next things to move to. So, we managed to electrocute the electric you. Wow, <laughs> how did that happen? All right, <laughs> so. Yeah, I got eaten up by amoeba, but no problem. I managed to electrocute the electric eel, and now I can become a burrowing beetle, all right? I think I think beetles, you know, yeah. So like parasitic plant got censored, all right? So you can see that like the DAW E API, you can generate all these images, and it's not bad, all right? Like it looks quite realistic. So now we have chosen to evolve to a burrowing beetle, all right? So, um. What I can do next is I can choose one of the attributes to add on. So 
I think uh enhance powering abilities, tick exo. I think maybe tick exoskeleton is better because you get protection from from other people. So let's do tick exoskeleton. All right. I'm gonna play until I evolve one more time, all right? Because this is just to get give you a feel of how the game flows. All right, then after that, I'll go into the specifics of how I coded this. So your Baron Beetle has now a tick exoskeleton. All right, we need to fight one. Ah, I think maybe I should fight the hunting. No, hunting fish sounds bad, right? Later I get eaten up again. Uh, maybe the giant water buff would be good. Yeah. Oh, but it's no choice. Powerful bite. Okay, look at that. Or I can kill the electric eel again. Okay, let's go for the giant water buff. All right, let's 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 fight it. Let's fight the giant water buff. Okay, let's let's see what happens. I really like the visuals here. The giant water buff put out a fierce fight, but the Baron Beetle's thick exoskeleton provided excellent protection. You know, you know this battle thing. Uh, it, you could also make it like if you want a turn-based RPG, you could have a HP deduction for each of the spells and stuff. I didn't do that. I mean, that's that would lengthen the game a lot. Um, you can also do like it being part of like a, a video or something. Yeah, that will make it more fun. All right, evolve to a new species. Well, finally, from worms, I go to bugs, and now I can go into other stuff. Like I think I like a dragonfly. You know, dragonfly seems good. Okay, let's let's just click on dragonfly and see like what what what's next. Okay, I, I wouldn't go any further because if not, the video will never end. <laughs> and yeah, you can see you have sharp vision, camouflage, and wingspan increase. So let me just read to you. You have evolved into a dragonfly with your impressive hunting skills and ability to catch prey mid-air. You saw through disguise with unmatched agility. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to give you this notebook to play around with. Um, you can you can see like what you like and yeah, you can see that these images are pretty nice, all generated by Doll E. But let's just see, just see how this is done. So this is the evolution game with text and images. Okay, in the future you can have videos and music, and you can even put this into a gradual UI or pie game. You know, then you can play this in a more interactive UI because right now you can see like. Right now, over here, this is all text. You know, if you can format it into some window, it will be way nicer. So now let's see how to run this yourself. Okay, how do we run this? Uh, first, you need to get your API key here. You can go here and get your API key from OpenAI. It's required to run the chat GPT as well as the doll E in this notebook. Okay, then I need to tell you a bit of the pricing, all right? So um, every single phase, all right? Like attribute phase, evolve phase, um, it costs about 0.2 cents. Okay, for chat GPT, uh, that's not very expensive actually. The main uh, cost is here, doll E. Yeah, I hope they reduce the price soon. Doll E, I use this 1024 by 1024. It's about two cents per image. I generate three images per phase. That's about six cents. So that's the expensive bit. So just now I played like six phases, that's about 36 cents. I mean, actually, I, I think I played more than that. So Easily, you can enter up to a dollar already. All right. So these are the uh, phases of the game. Okay. We basically use a rule-based uh, phase tracker. Later, I'll show you how I coded it. Use the memory of the previous phase to guide the next phase. Um, this actually easier said than done. I had to do a lot of fine-tuning and configuring to make this work as an API. Uh, it was way easier when it was a web browser. So as I said earlier, I, I did chain of thought prompting from species, attribute, habitat to the, the face and then to generate the plausible options. And doll E will generate the images based on the option description. So you can see that uh, if you have your API key, you can just put it here, All right? Now we go through this. Uh, this is the strict um, output function, which is basically the strict JSON framework. Um, you can see my other video on this. I will not be going through this, uh, but what this does is that it will output the large language models outputs in a JSON which will allow for easy passing and follow-up, right? So we have this next thing called display images, which basically takes in the three text descriptions of the options and then use the OpenAI doll E to create the images. So if um, because of some, some like censoring, they are unable to create the image, we will just do the default slash image, right? It's not very amazing, but you know, that's the best we can do right now. 
All right, so um, the main game, this is where the crux is. Uh, we have like this memory where we store the earlier phases. Uh, I opted not to do an introduction phase because it might spoil the flow, all right? So we start off with like the evolved to new species. We just pretend the player evolved, okay, from bacteria to protozoa, all right? And like the habitat will be a pawn, attribute will be resilient, okay? And then we keep repeating this, okay? So we have these phases, choose attribute, fight creature, evolve to new species. And the problem will be you are the host for the evolution game. The game consists of three phases which repeat continuously until game over. So we have to choose an attribute phase, fight a creature space, and evolve space. And here's where we have the magic happen. We gave it the previous phase, which is like what happened previously. Okay, and we give it the current phase so that we ground the large language model. What's the current phase to generate? So this is very, very uh, forcing the large language model to output directly off that phase itself. Okay, then we have the player choice for the previous phase, which is given here, right? And the player choice is basically the user prompt for this. Okay, early on, the like you are a game host, that's the system prompt. So the user prompt is just the, the choice itself. Okay, so based on the user prompt, uh, we have this output format that we use the strict JSON framework to generate. So we ask it to generate the outcome, okay, which is the vivid description of outcome of, of the previous phase based on player choice. So since the user prompt and the system prompt already has the previous phase, as well as the choice, it's able to generate this out. And note the angle brackets. Angle brackets means that I want the large language model to generate something for me based on this um, this kind of tag description. Okay, then we have the type of species for the player. Okay, instead of this tag, we can also do it like that. Okay, I, I did the tag here because sometimes it just output verbatim like this vivid description, uh, which is not what we want. So this tag like kind of forces the large language model to generate something that is related to that. All right, the attribute, we put them in a list, uh, the current habitat, and we have the description of the phase. So over here, you see this is a very interesting way to get the JSON output. We can actually use the label based on the phase itself. Okay, the reason why I did not generate the description here with the face is because if we do it here, sometimes GPT might override it. So if we do it as a label, GPT will not override that label. So at least when it generates that label out, it can condition the flow of the options here. So this is just a, like a workaround, all right? And over here, you can see that I even condition my options on this face just to make sure that all the options are generated based on that face. So based on what I described here, you can tell how hard it is to use the API already. Okay, not my strict JSON API. How hard is it to condition the flow of a game, right, using memory, all right? This is difficult because if we use the web browser, you know, you have all the chain of messages before that. And, you know, somehow it's easier. Now maybe I, I could have done like that. I could have done like the whole text of the past few messages, uh, but I wanted to save tokens, so, you know, and this kind of works. Took a while, but it works. And we have a temperature here, so we get more stochastic generation. And over here, um, if let's say the angle bracket still remain, okay, is ungenerated, uh, then we will repeat the generation again by continuing this. Then it will use the same memory, and then it will try to generate this again, right? And so after it's generated, we can then print out this key here. So if you want to, like I can just put as a to-do, uh, make the UI prettier by using Gradio. You can use Gradio for this, definitely. Okay, you can use Gradio to output text and images. Maybe I'll do this as a follow-up. You know, if you all want to see it, I can do this as a follow-up. It's not too difficult. Um, here I delete the outcome. Okay, because if I continue putting this outcome here, uh, when we try to generate this again, it will just repeat the previous phase. So, you know, when I delete the outcome, um, then it will base on all this here to generate another vivid description. So, so this is necessary. All right, this part is necessary. So you can see there's quite a bit of try and error here. It didn't work as smoothly as I thought it would blend in with the APIs. And that shows the limitations of like using the API versus the web browser. Because when you use the API, it is not stateful. You don't have all the previous messages to ground it. So you need to do a bypass. Okay, either you have a very, very long memory with all the introduction phase and all the past phases, or you do something like what I'm doing here, just use it, the strict JSON and then try to force it to generate something that is plausible. 
All right, so this is the part for the images. Uh, we give it the options and then we basically output the images in a HTML in a, in a row with three different images here. Okay, if we actually do it with Grajo, you can even click on the images to, to choose your choice. All right, so the player uh, choice will definitely be one of the three. You know, if you click on the images, also it will be one of the three. We don't allow flexibility here because if we allow too much flexibility, it might spoil the flow of the game. Right, that's what I found out also in the earlier evolution game. So yeah, that's more or less it. Let's just do a recap again. You see like bacteria to protozoa, we chose predatory. All right, we fought an amoeba, but we got eaten up. <laughs> and then from amoeba, we became a parasitic worm. After that, we became a segmented body. And then um, we went to fight a uh, electric eel, an electric eel, and we managed to electrocute, electrocute the electric eel. Well, what an achievement. Okay, we became a baron beetle. And then we gained the ability of the thick exoskeleton. Okay, after that, we fought a giant water bar. And then we won it. And then we evolved to a dragonfly. So that's more or less uh, what it is. You can see the habitat has shifted from aquatic pond to open fields and forests. So yeah, that's more or less it for my sharing today. And you know, if you like to try it out, um, do, do use this notebook that I'm going to upload it and put the link in the video. Do try it out. Let me know how it feels. And uh, I think we can actually evolve this game even more. All right. Evolve this game to make it uh, like in a gradual UI to make it more, more fun with some music. And uh, for OpenAI, I hope they actually lower the price for this even more. Like 0.2 cents would be great. Now, two cents is still a little expensive, all right, so that we can actually play around with this even more. Or we can use a local um, image generation model that is not Dolly, but you need to own your own GPUs for that. So, yeah, that's more or less it for the evolution game. Yeah, hope you all like it. And yeah, let me know how, how the game is for you and see whether you can get yourself, uh, make yourself a human or anything. Uh, if you so choose to not want to pay for the images, um, you can just take this whole thing here and you just comment it out. All right, then it won't generate images. It will just generate the text. Then maybe you can play for uh, much longer without busting your budget. Okay, if not, um, I'm signing out and yeah, enjoy the game. Okay, bye.